welcome back for yet again some more Europa Universalis 4 with the uh, not the art of war DLC, but this time we uh, we are gonna play with the Cossacks expansion, and uh, that will mean uh, quite a lot of new features, um, funny features, interesting features, actually, yeah, useful ones. Um, we're gonna play as uh, as Brandenburg, and we're gonna go for the uh, Ein Reich uh, achievement, and that basically uh, means that we will need to form Germany. And I figured, well, it's a fun uh, little achievement. Well, little, it, it will take some time because uh, you need to uh, get quite a lot of provinces. And yeah, that's basically it. So let's just uh, start. You're gonna play uh, in Iron Man mode, otherwise you cannot really um, get the achievement. So let's just, uh, what should we call this? Let's just call it for the right. There we go. So yeah, it's uh, been quite some time since uh, I've recorded, basically because uh, school and stuff, and you never really uh, get into it. But I figured, you know, now with the Christmas holidays, uh, I should be able to just uh, spare some time to get this one loading again. Because starting it is basically the hardest part, because once you're in it, you just have way too much fun, and then you continue on moving. Uh, so that's basically why I haven't really recorded for quite some time because I believe the last time I tried like half a year ago uh, the recording failed and then you're basically done so you've been recording for like four hours or so and it's just not useful or usable and then you just fuck that shit you know I'll do it next week or tomorrow or and then you never really do it tomorrow or another excuse is uh, like Saturday night you go out with friends and figure like well I do it like uh, on Sunday you know a little bit hangover always fun to just blabber on with uh, with a hangover but then it turns out that you've been drinking way too much and then you're like ah, fuck it next day next week anyway um, Brandenburg so uh, what is fun about this little nation uh, for one it's really nice uh, it's really fitting my uh, playstyle because it has the let's see it has the Prussian idea group basically conquer everything it's it's just uh, optimized for that so uh, we get like a national tax modifier um, stability cost modifier morale of armies very nice the yearly army tradition decay which means we can get quite good generals which it may s usually means that you just like win every war infantry combat ability always nice and a national man manpower modifier very nice recruitment time not really that interesting and then like development cost and tolerance of heretics, also nice. Um, uh, another couple of things, we are a duchy, that's uh, not that interesting. Uh, from that duchy we get like a national manpower modifier, which is nice. And income of a vessel is plus 25%, uh, don't really care for that because if you have a vessel you usually don't really get too much money from them. Uh, however, with the Cossacks um, DLC, you get like new features. Uh, for instance, you now have estates, and I'm not really sure how to show estates. There we go. And uh, for us, we have like three uh, factions for these estates. So we've got the burghers, the clergy, and the nobility, and all of them have uh, loyalty, influence, and territory. I haven't really played too too much with this feature, however. Uh, all the events now are uh, linked to these three uh, factions. For instance, uh, you could get uh, an option to pay money to gain uh, loyalty. And the more loyalty you have, uh, the more bonuses you will get. So from the burghers, you get trade bonuses. From the clergy, I believe national, uh, what's it called? Let's see, national unrest modifiers. And then from the Nobility, you get uh, manpower recovery uh, speed. Oh, there you have a uh, national tax modifier actually from the cl clergy. So that's a very nice modifier. So the higher the, uh, the loyalty, the higher the modifiers. And I believe the bigger the influence, who, uh, the more um, local autonomy every province can get. So it's, um, as always, it's just pick the, the lesser evil that uh, usually works out. Also, um, now we're talking about local autonomy. Uh, that's been added to the game, I believe, like with the 
expansion from uh, Common Sense expansion, which is also a very nice expansion. Or we'll also have that one, uh, which um, basically means how much money uh, you can get from a province. Uh, the more local autonomy a province has, the less unrest they have. Uh, so you can boost local autonomy, so which will uh, yeah reduce local unrest. Uh, the lower the autonomy, the more taxes you get, and so on, so on. So, for instance, if I were to give uh, a province to the nobility, it will raise the local autonomy to 25%, I believe, because then, like, the nobility can have, like, a piece of the pie, which is, uh, I suppose, what they want. Uh, is there anything else I would like to add to this? No, we'll just, you know, hit it whenever we will. Um, my strategy will be to first try to form Prussia and in order to do that we need uh, so form the German nation that's like for the achievement and then form the kingdom of Prussia and for that we need uh, Prussia does not exist so that's we already have that one uh, a minister technology of 10 and that's yeah easy doable uh, one of the following must be true Brandenburg is Protestant or reformed which is actually a really nice one because when the Protestant uh, Reformation happen happens, uh, you could bitch and moan like 50 years uh, to remain Catholic, or you could just you know, uh, submit, become Protestant or Reformed, and that also has new um, features. So if you become Protestant or so, you can also get more modifiers. So I'd like to get Protestant, uh, become Protestant. It's just nice. Uh, we need to own uh, the core province of Konigsberg, and we, uh, and that's like right over here, Konigsberg. And we also need, what else? Uh, we need to own Danzig and we need to own Stolp. And yeah, that's basically the only uh, thing. So one of the, the Danzig or Stolp. So uh, my strategy will be to uh, invade ne Neumark as soon as we can. We then try to speed <laughs> create, uh, speed core, or speed creation, or just create a, <laughs> a really fast core on Stolp. So we can then move on to uh, Danzig, Konigsberg, uh, Mari, Marienburg, and Ermland. And from that, you know, just tr basically try to uh, conquer as much uh, of the coast as possible. And yeah, and we need to do that fairly quickly because Poland all also uh, really likes to uh, invade the Teutonic Order. Um, for alliances, or oh, let's first uh, find out how the world works. So Austria, you have, who are you rival to? Bohemia, Venice, and the Ottomans, okay. Um, because they are rival to Bohemia, Bohemia will most likely then uh, go for an alliance with uh, Poland, because they usually do, or halfway the game. Pretty annoying, because uh, Poland usually gets these scores, and in order to form Prussia, you need to get those scores back, and then you also have to fight Bohemia. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal, but still. Uh, let's see what else. So France is rival to Castile and England and Burgundy. Uh, he's gonna get a little. T uh, yeah, it's gonna be tough for him because he can't really. Yeah, so uh, I think France won't re won't really get far uh, in this game. And Austria, yeah, Venice is an easy one. The Ottomans is not really too too uh, smart. But hey, it's, uh, it's, it's like randomly assigned every time. So uh, who do we want to ally, really? Um, I think Austria will be a nice one, even though they will not really join any wars um, inside the uh, uh, the what's it called the uh, the empire. But uh, that's also not really that big of a problem. Uh, however, perhaps France would also be a nice one. However. They can uh, ask you to join a war, which you're not really waiting for. Um, so let's first choose our rival. So it's the Teutonic Order is like a no-brainer. Um, Bohemia. I kind of want to go also for Bohemia because I want uh, this province, Iga, or have, however you pronounce it, Ega, Iga, because it um, actually <laughs> has gold, quite a lot of gold. And once you have gold, you basically uh, yeah, get quite a lot of money. Uh, and also Pome Pomerania. So Pomerania is a very easy one to get, and then I suppose 
we could go for Bosnia, sure. Um, why do we choose rivals? Uh, just uh, so we can get the power protection, protection going. Um, because that's power protection of 25, you get an additional leader without upkeep. You get more uh, at 50, you get more diplomatic points and uh, triumph over your rivals to gain power projection and the war. Yeah, so it's basically very handy to just uh, maintain. And, and uh, if you defeat a rival which is way stronger than you are, then you are very much, uh, yeah, you get quite a lot of power projection. It's actually easy to maintain because uh, at some points your rival is just too weak and just go in and just have like a fight for money or so. The power protection. Okay, um, then allies. We could also go for Poland. Poland's always uh, also a nice one to have. Um, yeah, I suppose we just go for Poland first. Or not. How many can we have? We already have a diplomatic uh, or a royal marriage with Mantua. I don't really know why. Uh, I Mantua. No. So that's like right over there. For some reason, uh, if someone can explain me why we have uh, have that, <laughs> I mean, some historical event maybe. But you just start off with that one. It's not really yeah handy, but uh, it will die off very quickly. I mean, there's nothing to gain from it. Um. Yeah, I kind of want to go uh, in to the north, so get as much of the coastline as possible, and then also to the south. So our allies should either be to the east or to the west, and I suppose Brunswick is a nice one to have. Just um, or Saxony could also be a very nice one to have because um, let's see, who did you rival? Austria, Brandenburg, and Hungary. Or th those are your enemies and also those are rivals. Um, right. Um, yeah, let's go for Austria and then also... I kind of want to say uh, Poland or Lithuania. However, Poland can have the uh, event to uh, become a uh, senior partner, partner in the... Uh, what do you call it? in the yeah so they can actually lead a personal union with uh, Lith Lithuania which that sucks so if you have like a royal marriage and, and so on with Lithuania you just lose it um, so I think Poland should be nice okay so that's the two we want and then the last one we can leave open for now and yeah that's basically it for the uh, for the startup, and then I suppose we just um, let's see, we'll just uh, build our army to its maximum, and we should yeah, start playing a little bit already. So we could enter two, two royal marriages, and uh, we could also go for Brunswick. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, and then as soon as possible, try to improve relations. 12th of December. Try to improve relations with Poland so they will join my war against the Teutonic Order. And also if I can uh, like drag him into the war, uh, that means that he has like the same um, truce time. And then we can actually uh, continue, basically block him from doing anything at all. That's uh, I suppose uh, what we want to do. Okay, Austria, how would you like to become my ally? Uh, not yet. So... Um, you're like not a really a priority okay and I suppose yeah the Teutonic Honor order always really get uh, an, uh, an alliance with the Livian order the Livonian order not the Livian order <laughs> Livonian um, sure let's see can we actually get like a decent leader already uh, not really at all mm. Reclaim no mark, that's a good one. Also the party. I think we'll just uh, try to reclaim no mark as soon as we can. Okay. And 
you are not really ready to become friends with me. Uh, ask community access, that only helps us. But uh, it, within like one month, they will allow military access, they should. Or military access, um, an alliance, of course. So uh, they tell that the event is successful of Vlachla the third, uh, but among possible options, uh, they went with the let us appoint a local noble instead. And okay. So yeah, not really sure uh, what that means. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can we also uh, add some points of interest countries I care about? Yes. Okay. They sound like those are already. Uh, yeah, chosen. That's good. Um, Lithuania and Germany do it. Okay. Uh, the Kingdom of Italy and the Empire. For years now, uh, stop it. Okay. For years now, the imperial authority of the Kingdom of Italy has been waning. Uh, success. Successive emperors have failed to impose their will on the Italian states and large areas that are formerly part of the empire uh, have been lost to Venice and the Papal States, who reject the empire's rights to them. Unless northern Italy is firmly brought back into the empire, the states uh, there may slip out of imperial control forever. So um, basically, uh, the Italian states get a option in 1490 uh, to stay or to leave uh, the uh, Empire and I once used it uh, to play as Milan uh, to just stay in the Empire because um, a lot of those states are just leaving it and then you can like kill them very easily. It also gives you protection because if you are in the Empire, then the Emperor always must uh, defend you if you are attacked. That's very fun. So it's uh, it's, it's a fun way to play. Okay, let's see. Do we already have claims on anything? No. I suppose we declare war and oh Poland would join if they are given territory. That's nice. Um, because I am willing to do so. Uh, let me first. Uh, there is an option in order to make sure. So there we go. So in the show diplomatic feedback, we can actually tell our allies what we would like. Oh, there we go. Misclicked. Okay, and I also would like Genzik. There we go. Um, I suppose I would be happy if I get this, and then this, and then this. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I suppose it's easy to say that you just, like, I want this all. And uh, this is uh, like a new feature with the uh, Cossacks uh, DLC, which allows you to uh, basically tell your ally what you want and why you want it and such. But I think that's together with Poland, uh, because Poland has two vassals, I believe. Uh, yeah, so you have like one march and one vassal. So we should be able to just like, yeah, win very easily. Um, Okay, declare war, we give an order, we'll join, and we will promise some territory to Poland. And uh, it could be like some shitty territory, like uh, we could get like Kui. Okay, there we are, let's move it. And can we get aside something else to boost? Uh, no, I don't really think so. So it's basically uh, 11 against 13, no, 12. And now it is 20 against, oh wow. Yeah, this should be an easy victory, I hope. Especially if I can like get um, Neumark very quickly and then basically hide, about, hide behind uh, Poland's skirt so our manpower reserves don't like drop instantly. So a representative of the people living in an area dominated by one of the most prominent families of the nobility has approached at the throne today, imploring the prince elector to take action against what he claims are systematic abuses of power against the people there. As the ruler of Brandenburg, Friedrich II von Ho Hohenzollern Zollern, has a responsibility to protect his people, not doing so will make uh, us appear weak and may harm to long term growth of, provin of the province. The nobility would, like, uh, would likely not take kindly to 
uh, chastising such a powerful member of their ranks, however. So, turn a blind eye, which will lose base tax, but we gain loyalty. Uh, loyalty is nice. Uh, or chastise the landowner and lose lo loyalty. Um, I don't mean, yeah, base tax. Mm. Do I care? Do I care? Or do I not? Um, how much loyalty do we still have? Uh, quite a lot. Um, so. We would lose nothing, so we just chastise them, maintain our base tax, maintain our 15 uh, bonus, and all should be good. Okay, and there we are. We've already conquered uh, no mark, so we get now a ticking war score, and also uh, a new feature, or at least I'll just you know, point it out. Uh, you can now, uh, if you have a standing army on a uh, province. You can actually raid the province for some money, and that will actually give you, let's see, war, no, spoils of war. So that's an easy way to uh, get, like, lots of money. So we'll just, like, uh, put our army right here. And also, uh, this is with the, um, how do you call it, the Cossacks uh, expansion. We now have, like, a, a participation percentage, and that will basically divide uh, the money and such, uh, in this fashion also uh, you can get favors get favors give away favors and uh, so on oh wow well, we're actually losing this one um, so we'll enable the attach to this unit function which will uh, give the AI uh, the option to attach to my unit uh, because my unit is way stronger because we have uh, the Western technology if I'm correct and I kind of want to have like another military leader like a, a decent one because one 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 shit won't really survive because he has a two two oh, okay it's not really that big of a deal actually mm. yeah, okay let's just get in there now well, hopefully the opponent will support me okay they did not uh, so we actually lost the battle shite um, yeah, that's really odd because we actually have the manpower uh, advantage or more men to the power. So, uh, unhappiness among the artisans, uh, conflicts and protests over taxes, co corporations, trade and customs policies are becoming quite frequent and could result in a sharp drop in our industrial production uh, if we don't handle the situation carefully. So, um, we could lose some money and gain some loyalty, or we could lose ability and lose some loyalty. Um, yeah, so what is the tax? So we'll lose, lose some money. And uh, that uh, was basically it for the first episode. I'd like to thank you for watching, and uh, I'll catch you for the next one.